Hey, hey, we are live. Tuesday, OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone. Scott Torgerson, the Torque from QFM 96, Torg and Elliott Show. Sam Grooms with you every Monday through Friday, giving you free entertainment, whatever, whatever streaming service you're watching. We appreciate or listening. We want you to subscribe to the new YouTube channel or whatever YouTube channel you're watching on, including the Menace to Sports channel. So give it a like. We appreciate it. Give it a subscription uh, where you can get in on our Sports memorabilia, little giveaway. Remember, you got four days to subscribe to our channel, and then you get in on it. Tons of giveaways, tons of cool stuff we've gone over in the podcast. So we will uh, mention all the stuff later on in the show. Remember, the Super Chat's going on right now. And, of course, as always, if you're hurt at work or in an accident, let attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you at warforyou.com. Sam, any truth to the rumor that you are hiding P. Diddy? <laughs> Um, if you'd have given me more of a heads up, I could have come up with something far more nefarious and funny to say to that. But no, I do not know where the diddler is. I'm sorry. He is. Have you seen the meme of him in the Riddler outfit and they're calling him the diddler? Oh my God. Ooh, man. I mean, I would imagine if you've got Homeland Security raiding your homes, your properties, that you're probably guilty of something, right? Dude, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, Cat Williams talked about this a couple months ago on Shannon Sharp's podcast. Well, do you remember? And, do you remember like who it was that kind of blew up the whole um, uh, Bill Cosby thing? It was Hannibal Burris doing yes, a stand? Yes, it was. And it's like everyone started to pay attention to it, and then all of a sudden, holy crap, it's all true. And you know, persona non grata is, is Bill Cosby. Yeah, dude, it's scary. It's scary time, man. For him, well, and here's what I was talking with my wife about this last night. I showed her the thing that TMZ was reporting that the the private jet went from uh, was it L.A. to Miami to uh, Barbuda, and I was like, "How does that happen? Like, if if Homeland Security is raiding your home or the FBI is raiding your home, like we they have the ability to basically pull a pull a passport or you know intercept and ground a plane as long as it's under their in their airspace." So I'm a little surprised that they were. Uh, allowed him basically to flee flee the country that quick. Oh, he wasn't on it, though. On the private oh, plane? No, he wasn't. He was spotted at the Miami airport. I think it was a diversion. Like, we go here, you follow me there, and then I'm really going to go here. Like, Diddy's going here while everybody else is going there. So right? you, can see, you can see how little attention I've been paying to pop culture and news today. Like, I was texting Chris and Zach last night, um, you know, asking them how Bourbon and Ball went, not realizing it was Monday and Bourbon and Ball was today. Like, I don't even know what day it is. Oh, bourbon and balls tonight? It is tonight. It's on Tuesdays. Okay. How much does it cost? Yeah. I how much does it cost? Yeah. I think it's like 20 bucks uh a month gets you each Tuesday or something like that. Okay. Um, but I'm my point is like I don't know what the hell's going on right now. Like I'm just tired and kind of out of it. Dude, just take like 20 minutes a day, not even 20 minutes, take like five minutes a day and go on TMZ. Well, I TMZ to, covers I, news, Sam. I'm not kidding you. TMZ co covers news better than the network news. I used to actually, I, I would go onto their website and kind of read their headlines to see what was going on. But um, just, you know, between not having time and not really caring as long, if it doesn't really affect me anymore, I, I just don't care. You don't care about P. Diddy's freedom? Jeez. No, I, I, I actually probably if if he's guilty of what he's accused of, I, I, uh, I care for the the kids more than, than the diddler. Yeah, I listen. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but he is in trade. He's getting sued for like thirty. Isn't someone going after him for like thirty million bucks? Jeez. Ex girlfriend said he's mean like, to her. And what a what a fall from grace too. Like that guy was, you know, in the nineties and early two thousands was everywhere. Stopped making music, started producing, getting kind of behind the scenes. And then now he got behind the scenes. Like it's it's gotten real weird real fast. And I was I said to my wife, I said, he's either gonna be the canary uh in the coal mine when it comes to Epstein's Island, or he's gonna be the fall guy for Epstein's Island. Yeah. Yeah, just don't uh, have the guards go to sleep if he's locked up. Uh today's poll question: which Ohio State football player do you think will have the biggest impact in the upcoming season? Like the channel, get it like, let's get the conversation going on this one. This is gonna be a big one next season. Which player is going to have the biggest impact? I'll even let you do a offense and defensive player. By the way, it looks like we're, uh, you talk about subscriptions. It looks like we're about 70 shy of 2,000. Oh, let's so, go. Uh, let's, let's get on the 2, podcast channel. Let's get there. 
We got 70 to get to 2,000. So if you haven't liked the video yet, if you haven't gone over to the uh, the OVE YouTube page, please go like the page, subscribe. Uh, you'll get notifications as far as when uh, when new material is posted. But then also it's going to help us out a little bit down the road uh, and growing the channel. So any any help you guys can would be appreciated. Um, as far as the poll question, man, I think that's a good one because my mind immediately goes one direction. But then I start thinking about guys that I think they're going to have uh, uh, really good years, breakout years, and and careers at Ohio State. So I like this one. It makes you think a little bit. It does. And my defensive one will be pretty simple because I've been pretty critical of this guy for three years because I've been waiting for it because I've heard about it. And the fans don't like to criticize this guy. I don't care. I will tell you what I think. I'm not here to spare anyone's feelings because he's a hometown boy. But for me, this kid had a breakout game against Missouri and his line mate better do the same because there's been a lot of damn hype about these two guys. And they have done diddly shit for three years, quite frankly. One game out of three years for two guys. And the hype is there. And the mock drafts during the season told me these guys are a first-round pick. But my eyes told me, who the hell would draft these dudes in the first round? Right? I know we like our Buckeyes. And I know, Sam, we are biased against our team. But truth is the truth. If someone's not producing, they're not producing when it comes to that sack category. So... I think I'm giving you a preview of one of mine coming up in the second segment. You could kind of talk on the chat and super chat yours, and we could talk about your pick on the air on the podcast. But to me, man, defensively, it's simple. And then offensively, I think it's a little bit tougher. Yeah, all, all out of excuses for those two gentlemen, if, if I'm if I'm reading your writing. Uh, I but start- I, don't, I don't understand, though, Sam, why people would, like, go die on the sword for those two guys when it's simply they're not producing. Because I've heard, oh, Jim Knowles' defense, it, it, you, it's not about the double-digit sacks, and it's not about this, and they're playing within the defense, and the defense is good, so you shouldn't criticize. Well, if you're five-star dudes, and you're not getting over like six, seven sacks a year for like three straight years, it's it's Ohio State. You put someone in that position that can get you double-digit sacks because that's what this silver bullet defense does. It pressures the quarterback well, I, from the I know, second overall I, pick to the Bosa boys to Vernon Golston to Matt Finkus to, you know, Finkus, our boys coming back. I got a text last night coming back uh, the week I come back from vacation. Uh, so Finkus, by the way, is like fourth or fifth all time in sacks. Can you believe that? So he's still in the top five, baby. Well, think think about the the most productive Ohio State defenses we've had. We've always had one and or two. Uh, defensive ends that can get to the quarterback because defensively if you can sack the quarterback if you can get to the quarterback it's going to make playing defense a lot easier and if you can do it with just four down linemen and allow your linebackers and your your dbs to do their jobs it makes it makes playing defense astronomically easier and and you know i don't want to give it away but based upon what you're saying uh high state really hasn't had that even though you know, the defense did take a pretty big step last year as far as uh, production and, and, you know, overall numbers. But And by the way, I'll, I'm going to take a dig at this dude, but I'm also going to commend him too because he was one of the only guys that Missouri week who really showed some nutsack and really was pissed off about right. some of the stuff going on at the program. And I, I love that. I love when players play pissed and maybe he needs to play that every week, right? Right. Maybe, maybe you do that every – maybe that's like – dudes get like – pumped up and do different things to motivate themselves. I don't care how you do it. Do that. Pretend you're disrespected every single week. I like Agreed. that. We'll let you guys marinate on that one a little bit. We'll get to that at the beginning of the second segment. I want to start uh, first. got a high state, and then I want to talk a little bit about Michigan and some of the uh, some of the actions that their, their basketball program's taken and then some quotes coming from a uh, booger eater. Uh, high state tonight uh, plays in the, what well, this is the third round, I believe, the quarterfinals of the NIT. They've got Georgia tonight um and i've got one a little little bit of information that i want to talk to you a little bit about after this but first question i have for you uh based upon tonight's game win or lose has this season been a success for high state hoops uh that see that's tough because i would love to and for me i'm i got more excited about this team and i've been honest about it was they made a lot of money gambling betting against them especially like on the road uh even when i thought it was close i bet the money line on the road team and i just just crushed it with my account. And then once the Buckeyes started catching up, then I was done. And that's what good gamblers do is you ride a wave, whether a team is 10 and 0 or 0 and 10 or whatever it is, and you ride that wave. And then once it 
stops. You don't go again. You just stop. That'd be my advice is you stop riding the wave because that wave is over. So I would, and I really got into this season. We talked a lot about it, especially with this podcast. So you know, I could take the season and go, Chris Holtman, major fa- failure, probably the most disappointing season in my 17 years of living in Columbus, 17, 18. Uh, no, no, 18 years. So that part, most disappointing ever, the Jake Diebler, a pleasant surprise where I would say, and you're going to kill me for this, no matter what happens, knowing that, all these guys are going to be back. They're playing different. They're different players under Jake Diebler. I'm going to say this season, no matter what happens tonight, is a success because of what is going to happen in the future because I'm a believer now. So I th- well, I would I mean, say 100% success. You could be you could be optimistic about the future, but you also have to be realistic about what this season was. Um, you know, if Ohio State was somehow, you know, crept into the – the big dance, right? And they were in the Sweet 16. I think you could maybe make that argument, but you're you're in an also also ran or an also run tournament. You had an abysmal year. Uh, you find you finally got the albatross off your neck that you hadn't won a uh, a true road game or a conference road game in over a year, and you had to fire your coach and pay him 12.4, 12.8 million dollars to walk out the door. So, you know, regardless of what what happens tonight or what happens in this NIT tournament as a whole, I can't, you can't say that this season was a success in any, I, I I can't really figure out how we can make that argument. However, like I said yesterday, you could take, also take a real shitty situation, uh, take lemons and make lemonade. You could take this, this crap situation that you've, you've created for yourself and turn that around into some momentum going into next year. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't, by any measure, I don't think the season's been successful. However, uh, I also think given regardless, regardless of what happens this evening or in the rest of this tournament, you have now created a little bit of optimism. You've got that glimmer of hope and you've grabbed that momentum and hopefully you can ride it into, into the season next year. Yeah. I, I don't think it was abysmal from the standpoint of you could have a realistic argument now. And the media was all fixated on Rick Patino not getting into the tournament. And I'd say Seton Hall was the one team. If you look at what Seton, Seton Hall beat UConn, uh, Seton Hall was the team to me that got robbed. And the second team is you could have a honest conversation of Ohio State getting in there. You could have a conversation that Ohio State deserved to get in the play and gain them over Virginia, right? Virginia didn't belong. There's probably like two or three teams, Sam. If you stack the Ohio State resume up against those teams, you would I'm have su- like a legitimate. I'm surprised, though, the media. The thing is, Sam, though, the media was so fixated on Rick Patino and Rick Patino speaks that they didn't even get to Seton Hall and they didn't even get to Ohio State because Seton Hall or, uh, excuse me, uh, St. John's had one, did they have like one top 25 win towards the Mm -hmm. end of the season against Creighton? And we beat Purdue. We beat Michigan State. We had on our resume wins against top 25 teams. We beat Alabama. So there were teams that we beat in the top 25. And yeah, you could point out, like, didn't win a road game to the very end. But you also should point out how the team was peaking at the end of the year. And outside of crooked refs, maybe Otani was betting on Illinois in the Big Ten title game. We do, we do not know that because he did not answer those questions yesterday. So maybe Otani had like 100 large on Illinois in the Big Ten title game. But if it wasn't for the crooked referees on the take in that Big Ten tournament game, this team would have advanced and probably even made it more difficult for the committee to deny them access so, man, I look at it as a success because you really took something that was a turd in the in the you know toilet bowl and you made it shiny and new. I I just I got really impressed of what what Jake Diebler did uh, at the end. I mean, I just I thought the Illinois game was just crap refereeing, the second most differential in fouls in like twenty years in the Big Ten or maybe in Big Ten history. It was just crap. So well, we can we know, can make what, the argument he's too. Done, he's lost two games. I mean, we can make the argument too that, and and I want to touch on this real quick before we we hit the next or next topic. But you can make a tremendous argument that Ohio State deserved to be in and over Michigan State. I mean, comparing records and wins and all that. The only reason Michigan State got in over over Ohio State or into the big dance at all was because of Tom Izzo and his history there. Yeah, that's it. And they did that win team a was game. Garbage. The team so was they garbage. Made- they didn't belong. But they they won a game which was a lot better than you know Florida Atlantic, right? We were touting Atlantic SCA. won their conference, so. Yeah, no, they didn't. They won the tournament, conference tournament. Yeah, they they, they the won the American, did they not? No, they did not. 
I think they were third. Oh, they had a slight dip at the end. If you look, I look, I checked the other day. Okay. They had nine law. Yeah, I think they were second or third in their conference. Go check. Go Google's your. I'm friends. on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Use it. ESPN then hit standings and then scroll down. I don't think they did though. I I I checked on that. I just I was really impressed with Jake Diebler. We got no, information right. on. Yeah, you um, one. Yeah, but I mean, so. Yeah, they Michigan is those good, man. You're right. I bet was it you that told me off the air when I bet on Mississippi State? Like, dude, you don't bet against Michigan State in the tournament. You don't. I mean, I that, again, that's the the only reason they were in the tournament is because Tom Izzo's resume in March Madness in the tournament. Yeah. They didn't the 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 resume they put together and all the other months didn't warrant them getting in. I would I would say this that the Buckeyes were twenty and thirteen and the Big Ten was better. I think the Buckeyes got that just conference was crap outside of Purdue this year. Yeah, I mean, it well, really well, was one of those years where you'd really like to capitalize. If you're if Chris Holtman got these guys playing like Jake Diebler did, there would be no excuses. This would be the second best team in the Big Ten. With this, with this mm-hmm. roster next year, you could argue their top three roster, depending on what people do in the transfer portal and how it shakes out. You could have an argument that this team talent-wise is top three in the Big Ten next year. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have to do some homework on that, but. Uh, yeah, you're right. Speaking of uh, bad basketball and bad Big Ten, uh, we talked about it yesterday. Michigan basketball has hired Dusty May uh, from FAU. Uh, Dusty May uh, allegedly or reportedly had talked with Ohio State last, last month, but the Buckeyes decided to go with Diebler over Dusty May. You know, and you can't fault, fault like Ross Bjork and Gene Smith for making this call then, right? So they did their due diligence. They interviewed a guy, talked to him, and then decided what we have here at Ohio State is better. The one advantage they had, Sam, is they see how Jake Diebler operates his practice, operates his team, runs his team, and then they got to kind of peek in on Dusty May a little bit and how he runs his team, right? So maybe they felt he wasn't the right guy to do a complete rebuild on this team because that's what it would have been. All these guys would have left if Jake Diebler would have left. These are the same coaching staff, and I know they brought in an old Thad guy uh, yesterday during the show. Don't know much about him. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to say he's going to do this and he's going to do that. Um, But I think they felt like, hey, we got our guy right here. So do we have Dusty May come in our program and totally rebuild it? I think Michigan's fine with that just because Michigan is probably going to spend more resources and they spend more time on, we're a football school. Michigan is, we cheat at football school and focus on basketball because we can't beat Ohio State in football school. So that's kind of what their thing is, is we cheat like hell. We can't beat Ohio State. So let's focus on basketball, which, oh, by the way, we cheat at two. And then our coach will punch you in the face. Yeah, either way, they're getting away with something, right? Yes, yes. So uh, I'm even more happy now that the school did their due diligence. And if they interview a guy, Sam, and they feel like he's not the right guy, then you have to trust your athletic director, right? And then if it doesn't work out, you just pound the crap out of him, criticize him. I still, right? I, I still want to know who who Ohio State talked with and how those conversations ended. So, I mean, obviously they did a little due diligence on Dusty May, but well, Ross they call? Clark has, has been at a big program and interviewed right. people. And I, I just, you know, been and the ringer too. We'll never really know, but I, I would be curious to see who they talked to and how the conversations ended. Um, just, just I want to hit this one. One more quick thing. So I sure. would just say this. Just me. I would rather start this program like moving forward with what I've seen so far. And tonight's a big game in the NIT. I hope they pull it. I thought they played you know great the other night. If I would rather start next season with Jake Diebler, everybody coming back. Basically, we don't know about Key. I forgot about the COVID. Plus, year, Michi so. Johnson potentially. By the way, yeah, uh, transfer. Yeah, he, he's in the portal, and it's being kind of. Kicked okay. around that he's coming back to high state because he couldn't stand Holtman. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you know, so I, I figured they were going to add a player or two in the transfer portal. And we don't know about Key, and Key looked a little different. You get an extra year with COVID, so that's my bad. Um, I forgot to mention that. So I don't know if he's going to be back or not. But you, if you look what they have, I would rather have Diebler and what we have moving forward with a couple additions, because I think, Sam, you're right, they're going to dip in that transfer portal, than Dusty May. And a bunch of unknown because Dusty May two years ago got a team to the final four. That's right. just that's just me. I'm more optimistic of this team. I would be wondering, like, all right, man, Dusty May, you're on the clock. You better make magic happen. Right. And it, I tell you what, Sam, if they don't make the NCAA tournament next year, man, 
Holy crap. I you mean, you're talking about Ohio State, right? Yes. This team is – everybody's growing. And you yeah, can't you, grow with Diebler and then all of a sudden crap the bet. Yeah, right? you gotta de- you got to start developing these guys because they the last several years have not. I mean, Zedke's a prime example. Yeah, the guy lost some weight, but he has, he's developed into starting to sixth man from coming I, from the bench. So he, It's been a couple years for him too. Don't you think, though, that, you know, and I don't know how many, you know, the game was on ESPN Plus – and they've had some games on Peacock during the season, which I get Peacock because I watch the WWE. But um, don't you think, though, you've seen the change? And it's too bad because I think Jamison Battle's been one of the biggest changes, and Jamison Battle won't be here next year. I just think his game's changed under uh, Jake Diebler a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I, I think these guys have, like, changed the way they play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. And like you said, it, at least it gives us something to hope for next year because – Holtman, they they didn't fire Holtman halfway, and they they retained him. It had been it had been pretty bleak. Could you um, imagine if Holtman like played that whole like we would be drinking bleach from the bottle, dude? One one last thing I want to hit before we we hit break. Speaking of Michigan, did you see Jim Harbaugh's comments on oh, JJ yeah. McCarthy and his pro day? And I want to hit a, throw you with a quote, and it says, "Literally, it was the best I've ever seen." Uh, Grumblings are that that Washington is now locked in on McCarthy as the with the number two pick. Obviously, silly season. Who knows if that's true or not? But my question to you is, and the chat, is the media overrating JJ McCarthy, or are we crazy? Are we homers? Hey, uh, write that in the in the chat, Sam. I want I want people's take on this. Okay, let's two things here. Let's get first, so we don't look like complete douche biased douchebags here, Sam. J.J. McCarthy was one of the winningest college quarterbacks of all time. That is fact. You can't take anything away. Now, cheated, right? Facts. We're talking facts here, so they cheated. But record-wise, until they erase those wins, hopefully they do, he is one of the winningest quarterbacks of all time. Not the best, but one of the winningest. In fact, some of the best quarterbacks in college football history aren't good NFL players. What I know Tommy Frazier, they played the, the gimmicky offense, but he was freaking fantastic. Tim Tebow at Florida. I mean, they didn't do anything in the pros. It's a college game. It's a different game. And that's why if you look at it's a different game and you cannot take what J.J. McCarthy did in college and then translate it to the pros and go, oh, it's going to be the same guy. They're going to win so many more games. It, you watched him play. If you're a Buckeye fan, you watched him play enough because you keep an eye on your enemy. And then if you look at like the, oh, J.J. McCarthy, the second overall pick. And if you're on YouTube, you look at the highlight package, Sam. And it's high school level quarterback crap that he's running right now. And you're you're trying to tell me, like NFL Network is who had it last night. And I'm watching the NFL Network and they're showing highlights of J.J. McCarthy. And they're going, we're here and he's the number two overall pick. But the highlights you're showing NFL Network is like basic football 101 that my kid ran in eighth grade. And you're saying that's going to be showcasing J.J. McCarthy as a legit yeah, quarterback? If, if, there's there's no, no tight throws. There's nothing yeah. there. They're, they're showing they're showing clips that basically if you can't make these throws you're not gonna you're not gonna play in the NFL period not because you can make these throws you're gonna excel in the NFL. I mean go just go back and watch. I mean we can sit here and talk about how they didn't throw the football at all in the second half against Penn State. Okay, maybe they found a weakness and they used oh, their he was strength up, against Penn State. Apparently hurt, Sam. Apparently What's he that? was hurt. They said he was hurt. That's what they said. And all of a sudden, he got uh, well against Ohio State. I don't go know. go back and watch. So it was the 2022 High State Michigan game in the shoe. Go back and watch the throws that he made, and some of the throws that were wide open or that were missed. Uh, one of the the long touchdown passes he threw because the DB fell down, and the the wide receiver literally had to stop, catch the ball, and take it to the house with nobody within seven or ten yards of him. Like the guy's not a great tremendous thrower of the football. We can talk about his moxie and the you know all these immeasurables the guy's an athletic dude but he's not a good passer and one of the things you have to be in the nfl is an accurate passer you have to not only be able to put the ball in a tight window you have to be able to throw guys open and you have to be able to basically deliver the ball where the coach schemes it up and if that means play action turning your back to the defense trusting your pre the 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 pre-snap read turning and delivering the ball where it's schemed up I just don't see him being able to do that. But he, again, maybe I'm the homer. No, he, he's he got traits of, and Baker has this traits too. If you watch Baker, 
you know, third and three, Baker's going to scramble and he'll take a hit. You know, he's not going to slide. Baker Mayfield, great quality about him. You know, Baker Mayfield in the big game when it's it's a big time, Baker's going to scramble and get that first time. I think J.J. McCarthy's a similar player where if he feels confident, that's the thing. If if Now, remember, when they weren't cheating anymore, Connor Stallions was off the staff. He was a different player. He looked different. The Penn State game was different. Ohio State, they barely squeaked through that game. That was a, such a close game. I don't think people realize how, damn, it came down to like two or three plays in that game. He was a different dude after the cheating scandal. So what is J.J. McCarthy going to do on the next level where Michigan's not playing Purdue, Indiana, these weak links of the, the Big Ten schedule? Crap. And so when you're not playing those teams, Michigan should have three losses every year just because who they are, right? I think we all agree agree on that. The Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State should have no more than two or three losses every season in the old Big Ten because the old Big Ten sucked. All those teams suck. You play two games every year, Penn State, Michigan, and one non-conference. And sometimes the non-conference team sucks. You don't know. So you're not playing big, skilled teams each week. That's why Kyle McCord can throw 24 touchdowns and five picks, Sam. Um, But J.J. McCarthy on the next level, Sam, he's not playing Indiana every week. And you're not playing Purdue every week or Minnesota every week. So what's going to happen? If you're picking number J.J. McCarthy number two overall, do you really think J.J. McCarthy, Sam, let's say number three, do you think J.J. McCarthy would walk into New England and do anything with that offense, he might be worse than Mac Jones. I don't know if he will be or not, but he could be. I, whoever drafts him that early is making a tremendous mistake. That's all I'm going to say. And again, maybe I'm the homer. Maybe he's going to make me, you know, put my insert my my foot from my mouth. I don't know. However, based upon what I've seen, based upon uh, the how strenuous and uh, fast the NFL is, I have seen nothing to this point. J.J. McCarthy is put on tape in a game, even against bad teams, that tells me he's going to be a productive quarterback in the NFL. Full stop, period. Take five teams. Take Okay, take the Bears out of it. Let's start Washington, New England, the Giants, and Minnesota, right? Those are the four teams that are going to be in play, and those four teams will either take Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or J.J. McCarthy. And you put... Drake may with any of those four teams and you say, okay, does he Drake may make those teams better? And you can look at every single player. And you go, all right, the giants, me, eh, eh, I don't know if I think Jaden, you know, eh, with any, any of those quarterbacks, right. You kind of look at the chance, go, eh. um, but all you, you could take Jaden McDaniels and Drake may Sam and go across the line there and go. Yeah. I think they make those, especially Minnesota. They have Sam Darnold, but then you take JJ McCarthy and go, All right, is J.J. McCarthy that – I know they traded Sam Howell, but play along with me. Is J.J. McCarthy that much better than Sam Howell they had last year? Looks like we're going to find out. Right? Or – see, I don't think so. I think it's a smokescreen. I mean, if Washington drafts him second overall, they are dumber than I thought they were, and they deserve to continue to suck. If the Minnesota Vikings draft J.J. McCarthy with that team, Minnesota next year will have the second or third most money – under the cap. So what Minnesota's doing is they're setting themselves up to be competitive and they're going to re-sign Justin Jefferson and make him maybe 33 million, 35 a year. And they're going to stack it and kick the can down the road like they always do. And Sam, Minnesota's setting themselves up to be really competitive the next year. They're going to take a year off. That's why I don't know if they should trade their first round pick next year or not, because I think they're fourth place in that division, but they're going to gear up for a 2025 run. If Moneyball GM and Kevin O'Connell take JJ McCarthy, and trade up to take him, their asses will be fired in two years, and they know it. Minnesota will be looking for a new regime, and they've set their franchise back five seasons if they take J.J. McCarthy, and they know this, Sam. Anyone who takes J.J. McCarthy, your GM and coach will be fired within three years if you take him in the top 15 picks. If you think he's going to be the savior for your franchise, non-biased, you think J.J. McCarthy is the savior for your franchise, you will be fired and work like Mike Tannenbaum. You're going to have a draft special on ESPN with Mel Kuyper Jr. That's your argue. future. Hard to argue. I mean, you, you, you don't you take risks that, with the second overall pick. Oh, absolutely. Or you, yeah, if you think you want to do that, you trade back to get assets. And Washington's another one of those teams. You don't draft high because you got a bunch of pieces. So 
trade down. If you don't like it, if, there are better. That's the thing, though. There are better quarterbacks available at two or will be than J.J. McCarthy. But you're right. I think it's smokescreen, too, because there can't be somebody running a professional football franchise that stupid. I think Washington I think should trade my person. I think Washington should trade out, get the three first round picks, Sam, and rebuild that defense. You traded the defense. You got some draft picks for the guys you traded. Rebuild that team. There's nothing saying you need to take a quarterback right now, correct? So get the extra first round picks. You need help defensively. And this is a quarterback heavy wide receiver early trade. You know, quarterbacks are going to go. The two receivers are three receivers are going to go. You're going to have six offensive weapons off the board, Sam, in the first like 10, 12 picks. That means Washington, if they traded Minnesota and got 11 and 23, a premier defensive player is going to be there, probably one of the top pass rushers at 11. And then you could do something defensively at 23. Or you could check Penix Jr. if he's there at 23. Mm -hmm. But boy, if I look at New England and Washington, I go, boy, those teams could, like New England, Sam, drafted a quarterback. You're setting that dude up to fail. That team right, sucks. I agree. We, um, uh, we're running 10 late. You want to hit a break? Yeah, hit a quick break. We got some news on the Bengals and made some calls today of what T. Higgins is worth on the open market. OVE podcast. We go to war for you. At Sugar Schnarr Trial Attorneys, we don't back down. Accident? <laughs> Call us today at 877-WAR4U or visit warforyou.com for a free consultation. Know your rights because results matter. That's 877-WAR4U. 877-WAR4U. Or visit warforyou.com. Warforyou. Warforyou.com. Hazmat Ohio is a firefighter-owned and operated all-hazards training company specializing in custom safety training for your company's needs. They offer corporate CPR, AED first aid, confined space rescue standby, spill and emergency response, and they can train firefighters, industry safety teams, and employers. Call 740-507-8802. That's 740-507-8802. Thinking of buying or selling a home? Give Lauren Torgerson a call with Next Home Experience. Lauren has been servicing the Columbus metropolitan area for 10 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer, considering building, want to upsize or downsize, Lauren can help you with all your real estate needs. Get a free market analysis for your area and get started working on making tomorrow's dreams happen today. Call or text Lauren at 614-296-3952. 614-296-3952 or email at torgersonlauren at gmail.com. OVE podcast, the Torg, Sam Grooms. Sam does not have P. Diddy hidden, so we can confirm that now. We had the Fed search his house. Homeland Security checked his house out. It's good. OV podcast every single day, live Monday through Friday, 3 o'clock, right here on the new YouTube channel. Of course, we're on Menace. Those are our guys. Menace to Sports, by the way, are going to be at Yogi's when, Sam? Fill in uh, the next blank. Friday. Next, next Friday. Friday. Yep. Zach's got his big bourbon show coming up. Patreon, right? Yep. That's tonight. All right, 20 bucks. We'll only take like 20%, Zach. It's all good. Only take everyone use the code word Torg. No, I'm just, I don't even know if there's a code word. So he, I don't he can know. Pay, just pay Zach. You can just pay me with a bottle of bourbon. Yeah. Uh, new YouTube channel, by the way, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. And when you subscribe to the channel, we got a cool sports rem- memorabilia package. We're going to be doing giveaways Friday. We're cutting it off because we did get our thousand followers and a little bit more. We're at like 1700. So we appreciate it. Uh, are we at 2,000 or where are we at, Sam, with followers? Give me one sec, I'll tell you. I think maybe we're a little higher. Maybe my math is off. I don't uh, know. YouTube, we're at, uh, we need 70 to be at 2,000. There we go. We need 70. I'm a stupid idiot. I thought we were at 1,700. I'm a stupid idiot. So we want to get maybe 2,000 and we'll start giveaways like next week and we'll notify you and we'll put it in our generator. Trust us. We've uh, our guy Dan out there. We've given away the Chris Carter uh, photo. Everybody gets their prizes. Some of the stuff, though, like the Ohio State beer can. Let me show everyone a picture of this. I cannot mail this. So you will be, you have to live in the Columbus area to get that because I'm not shipping that. I'm just telling you straight up. So here's the helmet. I'll ship that thing. I'll ship this. I will ship this. 
I will ship the cards we have, the CJ Stout rookie card. I'll throw some stuff in there. We'll maybe we got to throw in the Eddie George bobblehead doll. We'll do that. We'll give away the Urban bobblehead doll. I'm not giving away the Herbie bo- bobblehead. No way. Herbie stays with me. By the way, let me make. We got tons little, of stuff. Remember, person. subscribe and like the channel. I told you I don't know what day it is, right? Uh, it's two Fridays they're going to be there. So uh, let's see, it's the twelfth. It's the the Friday before the spring game. Okay, beautiful. My Friday mistake. before the spring game, we might have to show up for that. Yeah, I think we should. I think it's the uh, it's the responsible thing to do. Have some solo cup Fridays. Yeah, dude, solo yeah. cup Friday. I'm on vacation from the radio station on Friday. We might that might be an epic one. Friday's a uh, good Friday. Uh, our our, our uh, little guy's school is going to be closed, so uh, I'm in. pulling half duty that day. Bring him in. Bring him in. I'll bring in my well, kid. No, no, we'll no, watch I'll our this kids. Let our kids run around in the room. This Friday. Yeah, I know. I'll bring my kids in the room. You bring your kids in the room. My kids can like speak and go You use the potty by themselves, but you're screwed. Well, mine can speak. We're still working on the whole 100% on the potty thing. Oh, I got you. When that happens, wipe an ass, dude. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I want to kind of steer us this direction. Shohei Otani spoke. Oh, remember yesterday. real quick. Remember our poll question. We're going to get to this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Which yeah, Ohio State Buckeye again. football player do you think will have the highest impact in the upcoming season? Getting, think about getting that. Getting ahead of myself again. That's right. uh, I think whoever wins the starting quarterback job, again, most important job in professional sports or most important position, in professional sports, any kind of sport. Um, and then I kind of like where you were going, but I think. Sawyer has shown a little bit more uh, of what he's able to do, whereas I've only seen JTT do it one game. So I want I want whoever the quarterback is to to be that guy, and then I also want JTT to get motivated and finally be consistent, break out of the shell, and let's see it game after game after. No, game. no, not who you want. So you think JTT is going to have the biggest impact on this Buckeye football team the upcoming season? Sure, I'll go with that. Oh, dude. So if I'm going offense and defense, I'm going to give you one from each. I'm going to do Jack Sawyer. Loved what he did against Missouri. It's the first time he showed that flash with three sacks. Dude was a monster. I think he was pissed off. I think he was motivated. I think he was sick of people saying that that game versus Missouri didn't care. I think the loss to Michigan stuck in his mouth like some bad sardines. Just disgusting. I think he was pissed off, played pissed off. And I think the results showed on the field where it finally clicked for him. I think he'll have the most impact on this team defensively. Runner-up Caleb Downs, who uh, got his black stripe. Welcome. Judkins got his black stripe. Welcome. Uh, Offensively, you know, Sam, I have a man crush on Carnell Tate. And I'm going, I think he is going to be a top five pick in the draft when he goes out in two years. And I'm going to go Carnell Tate will go ape she so you know how you guys used to play the loving you is easy because you're beautiful mm-hmm. song so yours yours is carnell tate mine's jeremiah smith going forward all right yeah and i like we can, I like have, we can have our man crush man crushes on those two gentlemen well do you know how the my guy thing started right with me and the common man i think they still use it the my guy oh yeah um it was about my love for terrell Pryor. that's how really? it started yeah we were talking about me and terrell Pryor getting a room together <laughs> which at the time I had no problem with. And then I just said, my guy, he's my guy. And that kind of uh, started the whole, my, we started saying my guy. But didn't Terrell you guys Pryor get told the, didn't you guys get told by your bosses to stop using the lady Vic meow comment? Uh, no, no, no. We got told to stop doing the, we got told to stop doing the, my guy. Oh, we got I thought called when you guys- the GM. No, no, it was, it, it was the my guy. We got called in the GM Dave Van Stone's office. Dave was the big boss, the big, the guy who fired me, sent me to the Sitco. And so we got called in the office and goes, guys, the my guy thing, it's annoying. People are saying it. Every time they call, it stops today. It stops. So we left. We left. And our point was, he goes, you know, he thought it was too big. It was getting too big. It's getting too big. Everybody's saying it. I'm hearing it. Got to stop it. And our whole thing is, why would you stop it if it's getting too big? That's a good thing that it's getting right. big. It's a catchphrase. That's what they do. They sell Seinfeld, stop being funny. NBC exec say, hey, Seinfeld, quit being funny. So we left the meeting. We said, all right, we're going to not do my guy, but we're going to come up with a catchphrase even more annoying. And I think it was like one of our interns one day came into Mike and I and goes, what's cracking? So then we decided to do, we go, hey, screw these guys. 
let's come up with another catchphrase and we'll try to make it as equally as big or annoying and we'll just prove to management, screw you. And we came up with what's cracking. And they hated, we did what's cracking for like three months. And then my guy came back and they said, all right, you can bring my guy. What's cracking is even worse. I just so that remember. Was, that's, we, they told us we couldn't say that. I just remember every time you guys would call somebody a pussy or say they were being a wimp or a wuss. No, it was stuff. Mark. San- no, it was Mark Sanchez and the dirty Sanchez comment. He's dirty, oh. not the lady. Well, bitch. but you guys would play the the meow or like yes. talk about using the lady pick. Which maybe maybe hilarious. Mike did, but I don't remember us getting yelled. I remember he's dirty when Mark Sanchez was playing, and we would mention <laughs> he's dirty, and we were told definitely we cannot say that anymore. Well, I don't remember the lady pick. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Mike got pulled in privately. Figuratively dirty. We can, we can all pretty much say that Shohei Otani's guilty of something he shouldn't have done at this point. Right. Ooh, dude. Yeah. He came out, came out yesterday, read. I don't think he answered questions. He read a statement that I would guarantee you. He's not the one that prepared, uh, denied betting on baseball or any other sports or, uh, asking somebody to do it on his behalf. He also denied using the, the bookmaker that's being investigated by the FBI uh, to bet on sports. And keep in mind, too, the bookmaker that is under investigation by the FBI said that it was Shohei making the bets. There's been so many stories about it. I don't know what to believe. He said this. He said that. Management said this. He said that. You know, two key things that come out. And I get it, Sam that sometimes athletes don't, you know, and I, I talked to a couple of guys like, Hey, did you like know every penny that was coming out of your bank account? Most guys did like, but I know like some guys have come out on X and said, Hey man, if, if I was losing, you know, a uh, couple hundred grand, I probably wouldn't notice until it was a little too late, but this was going on for a, you know, since he signed with the Dodgers, right? This guy was like with him. So uh, two questions, Sam. How did this guy get access to his account? And then another one is how did you not notice multiple $500,000 payments leaving your account? So I I did not paying attention to it, but same was 4.5 million. And that's just, I'm going to get the exact amount because Brandon Lane, the guy who reported uh, that it was maybe 20 million. I'm talking to him tomorrow. So I'm going to find out for tomorrow, show a little tease tomorrow of what Brandon Lane knows because he's a sports handicapper and he's reporting that it's more than four and a half million. I'm going to find out more about this story that we could talk about tomorrow, Sam. Well, and it wasn't the four and a half was losses, right? That was the four and a half wasn't total money. That was basically yes, he losses he had to wire in. So if you've lost four and a half, I don't know how necessarily how it works, but I'm guessing you've also gambled or placed more bets that you won on. So like, yeah, we only know about the four and a half million in wires. First so, and foremost, you know, like it, at minimum, right? Shohei Otani is guilty of being stupid. So in some capacity, well, so he's, given, he's given access to his bank account to somebody. And by all, you know, what, what the media has told us is, is this guy, this translator was his best friend, right? Yeah. He gave, gave access to his bank accounts to this guy. He didn't notice a bunch of money missing. But again, that still doesn't answer the question. How does a bookie give four and a half million dollar credit line to a guy making, I've heard he made 300,000. I've heard he made 80,000. It doesn't matter. You're not as, as somebody making 300 grand, you're not getting four and a half million dollar credit line from a bookie, unless the bookie either knows or assumes you're backed by somebody that is making a hell of a lot more. So like this still doesn't make sense. It still doesn't add up to me. And to Sam, when you're making that much money, they say, Oh, what if he had 50 million in his account? Well, you'd notice if 5 million has gone, right? Um, year-end statements, doing your taxes, something like that. And two, Sam, most of these guys have financial guys that look at their numbers, that look at expenses, that look at that point out things that will look and go, hey, by the way, you know, you had $500,000 going up. Just one, dude, my wife does it in my account. She goes, hey, did you spend five? I go, yeah, I paid a bill. Like you look at your bills. I do it all the time. Hey, did you do this? Yeah, yeah, I bought this. So you keep an eye on, now we're not in Otani's, you know, wage scale, but still you, you have guys, Sam, that's doing that. And who gives unlimited access to someone else to their account? Now I I can understand if he loaned it to him and said, dude, tough times, you pay me back. I got you, but that's not, that's not the position. That's not the stance they're taking. They're saying this guy stole the money from him. Like nothing adds up. Why isn't he arrested then? Nothing adds up. Like nothing makes sense here. I don't know. 
How can you just rob someone of $5 million and not get... Cause you ever see the story about Dane Cook, Sam? The comedian? Which which one? <laughs> the one about his brother. No. Okay, so Dane Cook is a one-time really popular comedian, folks. And he tells this story. Um, Dane Cook had everything going. And Dane Cook decided one day he was going to move... His brother was running all his finances. And he was going to move his brother to like the merchandising side, I believe it is. I could be wrong with some facts, but I think it was like the merchandising side. And he was going to hire like a big, he was making so much money. He was going to hire a big Hollywood guy to run his money. He was next level doing all these movies. He, I mean, he reached a career point where he had to start getting his crap in order with everybody who was working behind the scenes with him. So he told his brother, get in contact with this guy. And the guy, financial guy kept calling the brother, hey, transfer everything over, transfer everything over. And Dane Cook just couldn't figure out over a month what was going on. And he just had like a bad feeling. And one day he woke up and checked and realized his brother cleaned him out of everything. So what did Dane Cook do? Told, the, his brother. told the authorities and then had to go to court and then sit across from his brother while his brother went to jail. But he went through. So if Dane Cook did that with his brother, Sam, and his brother goes to the slammer, right? They alert authorities. They arrest his brother. How does Otani not? If this guy embezzled, and I listen, four and a half million dollars. I don't know what the amount was with Dane Cook. He cleaned him out, though. So you'd think four and a half million dollars. The authorities would probably arrest this guy, Sam, and put him in jail by now. But instead, tinfoil, the IRS is investigating. Tinfoil hat time. Maybe it was Otani's translator that was on Diddy's private jet. Oh boy, or paid for the private jet. Yes, I don't know. It's just it did. Did anything yesterday with the Otani story make you? feel better about the Otani story? Well, and the mere fact that they, that he didn't sit, and I, obviously, the guy, there's a language barrier, right? Like, you can't just sit there and ask him questions. No, he just did it. He did a statement, and that was it. And then but he that's left. my point. Like, I understand you can't ask the guy questions, but I'm sure we can find somebody that can translate English to Japanese to be able to ask the guy questions. Like, this cleans nothing up. Like, yeah. it, 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 it honestly, like, it, it, it shows me or kind of tells me that this, there's far more, this, there is something nefarious going on here. Otherwise, yeah. they'd come out and answer the questions because there's nothing to hide. And how about Pete Rose's statement afterwards? Yeah. Pete Rose Rookie. said, I wish I had a translator in the 70s and 80s. I would be Scott off scot-free right now. Gorgie, appreciate the two, man. Pete Rose will be a saint when they uncover this. I don't know if he's going to be a saint, but I think he, he'll be maybe a little bit more vindicated and the fact that the Major League Baseball's got this hard on to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. But they'll do everything they can to to cover it up and and make something go away for the golden goose. Yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong here, though, folks. Major League Baseball doesn't control the Hall of Fame. No, it's the writers. Exactly. So, what's the problem? And listen, I, and I get it. It's kind of like Reggie Bush. Should Reggie Bush get the Heisman back? Well, you committed. You broke the rules back then, and just because the rules change doesn't mean that you should get your Heisman back, right? It's a legitimate question. Pete Rose broke the rules, but instead of Pete Rose being honest, and they had all the evidence against Pete, folks. They had all the the bookie, the kid who was running the bet. I don't know if I've told the story on the podcast when Pete wanted me to. I used to produce Pete's show, Sports Fan Radio Network, when he would go to Vegas, and Pete would take out money, and Pete couldn't. This isn't the yum yum story. But I can't. I'm not saying that on the podcast. That's a special story. When you see me out and we have drinks, I will tell you the young. You didn't tell story. that on the radio. No, because you can't tell that story on the radio. Ooh. Okay, yeah. good to know. Um, he would take money and have thousands, you know, like hundreds, like crazy. Pete would, and then he'd go, "Hey, he used to call me Earring. Hey, Earring, come here." And I made a bet with someone. I'd never pierce my ear. And they go, I'll bet you 50 bucks. You, you'll you do it for two weeks. I go, give me the 50. And I did it for like two weeks. And Pete laughed and goes, earring, you look ridiculous. I'm going to call you earring. So I go, earring, go bet. And he had this list. And it, Pete knew the ponies. And Pete would say, bet 1,700 on this. And he'd give you a list. And I go, dude, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And he goes, why not? I go, because I'm feeling I'm going to screw it up. And he goes, well, just hand the paper to them. And then give them that. I go, no, I just don't. There's a lot of money here. I was 22 years old. I go, Man, it's like six grand here. I just don't, I feel, and then he would just go, all right, Rob, come here. And then he had like the marketing guy do it. But Pete would write down his bets and Pete had a runner for him in Cincinnati that would make his bets for him. And this kid told Major League Baseball, wasn't a kid then, but this guy told Major League Baseball. And so Major League Baseball knew what was going on with Pete. 
But Pete was in such denial that he wanted to keep this lie going because people loved him. The baseball fans loved him. The Reds fans loved him. And he wanted to keep this lie going, Sam. And then finally, he, Pete realized there's only one way to get in the Baseball Hall of Fame and back to baseball. I got to tell the truth. And that's why he did. But Pete should have told the truth right in the beginning because he wouldn't I'm be the in the situation. Reds, oh, not the biggest. I'm a big Reds fan, and I, and I like Pete Rose. Pete Rose should not be allowed back into baseball. But the mere fact that he is not in the Hall of Fame makes the Hall of Fame entirely incomplete. So the way I see it. Shoeless Joe. That's another one too, right? There's more evidence of Shoeless Joe saying that he actually had nothing to do with it. Exactly. He's just, he knew about it. I completely agree in that regard too. Yeah. I don't think there's any denying Shoeless Joe did. And you go back to just like, interviews and historical records on this obviously because it was so long ago shoeless joe absolutely knew about it but if you look at the stats and what he did boy it's pretty hard a guy was throwing the game when he was like the best player on the field i think he just knew about it and didn't say anything because it was 1918 and he'd probably get whacked if he did well did you ever watch boardwalk empire they talk about they allude to it arnold rothstein's a character in the show that's right he is and arnold rothstein was the one that that basically did the rigging yeah, and they talk about it quite a lot. Mr. Rothstein liked to bet on a lot of things. Yes. Um. So does Pete deserve the hall? Why can't you just put Pete in the hall? Yes. Like, and that's then just thing. put an asterisk. It's like Pete was bad no, for doesn't baseball mean, for gambling. And put, baseball. put him in the hall, but don't allow him back into baseball. Like he shouldn't be coaching. He shouldn't be a an executive anywhere. Like just that's his that's his punishment. I'm surprised an independent team hasn't took advantage of Pete. And maybe Pete doesn't want to do it, but I'm surprised back in the day with the now ba- independent baseball's changed a little bit because a lot of them, like the St. Paul Saints, now become an affiliate of the team. So a mm. lot of the the independent charm is off because Major League Baseball decided to like, hey, we need to take advantage of this and let's make them an affiliate. You know, all the those those teams and the you know that made money and really made notoriety for being an independent baseball team. Like the St. Paul Saints would have pigs take the baseballs to the. Uh, but I've been to a Saints game. It's super fun. But yeah, I think they're an affiliate of the my, Minor League Baseball is a strange uh, being entity. Like, you've got guys that are serious about it, trying to get to the next level. But then you've got the the actual the, the team or the, the entity basically trying to do everything they can to get butts and seats. And they do some pretty wild shit. Yeah. Uh, you want to hit a break and go to, go to X? Yeah, well, let's hit a break. Do you want to do T. Higgins Browns news, NFL rule changes, and then X? We'll take a break and then X, do a double dip. Can you do can you do longer today, Sam? Sure. Let's do longer. OV podcast. Got some T. Higgins NFL draft news concerning the Bengals next. Hey, let me tell you about my guys at River Valley Restoration. If you have a project, I know it can be overwhelming. Let them take the stress out of it for you. Give them a call, and it doesn't matter if you've got a huge project, small project, or somewhere in between. They will take care of you. Free in-home consultation. They do roofing, siding, gutters, windows, doors, decks, attic insulation. I love that they do bathroom and kitchen remodeling. They can get pricey, but not at River Valley Restoration. The project manager is going to talk with you, work with you, picking the materials, picking out everything, taking you through the progress every step of the way, keeping you informed. I love that. At a price that you can afford and you know you're going to get a great job. 10-year workmanship warranty, double the industry standard, and a 50-year roofing warranty. They offer financing as well, 740-785-5000 or at rivervalleyrestoration.com. If you're having an event, everybody needs to be safe. Medical emergencies can happen any place, anytime, anywhere to anyone. You have to be prepared. Event Medical Staffing of Ohio has highly trained medical staff. They provide life-saving care when needed basic and advanced life support care to events all across Ohio. Festivals, concerts, fairs, motorsports, any sport you can think of, including film and television. They provide training programs as well, including first aid and CPR. So give Event Medical Staffing of Ohio a call at 740-403-6739 or at eventmedstaffing.com. Hey, OVE podcast, going to go a little later today. Ohio versus everyone. The Torg, Scott Torgerson, along with Sam Grooms. We do it all. Ohio sports, we cover it. Subscribe to the new channel on YouTube. Get you in on our sports memorabilia rewards program that we'll be doing throughout 2024. 
get you in on that where we pick a follower, someone who subscribed. Now, some of the prizes will give you a substitute. I am not going to mail some of these because they are humongous and I don't want to pay a hundred bucks for shipping. I figure I'm giving away cool stuff. Save me a little bit on the shipping. I kind of keep it like $30. Let's keep it there. So subscribe to the new YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. So appreciate you. Remember to like the channel, remember the super chats. Sam, what do you think? And we talked about this at the last owner meetings and they were ready not, they weren't ready to implement it. And the feeling at the time was that they didn't want to copy a former league in the XFL, but now it looks like it's official today. They voted on it. 29 to 3, the XFL kickoffs are now coming to the NFL. If you haven't seen these folks, I actually and they're and they're doing an onside kick rule too, where you can't do one until like the fourth quarter. You can only do two, I believe, something like that. Um, I'll have to read up on the story there. But Sam, the XFL kickoff, and basically it's gonna uh put the kicking and return teams downfield so there's no high field collisions. The kickoff will be at the 35, but the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receivers team 40. And at least nine members of the return team will line up in a setup zone between the 35 and the 30. And um, two returners can land up in the landing zone between the goal line and the 20 yard line. So go online and look up the XFL uh, kickoff and no one can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside the landing zone. Touchbacks are going to be marked at the 30. No fair catches will be allowed. If a team wants to attempt an onside kick, it will have to inform the officials of the intent and then would be allowed to use the NFL traditional formation. So no surprise, onside kicks will be allowed. There's a lot to it. What they they committed to is one year, but the thought, Sam, was they're going to do it one year to see if they need any tweaks to it. I think this is the best move for the NFL. So I think this, the, there's a couple of things I like about it. Um, I like the fact that it it's going to almost now force guys to return the ball, which I, I think is it, it's like the kickoff after a score at the beginning of the game largely has been a formality where it's they kick it out of the end zone or they fair catch it or take a knee. Like it's just a dumb play. Now I think this actually brings, brings this back and c- could potentially be a, a big play uh, going forward. The other thing I don't like and what I'm kind of looking at it is like if the kick doesn't reach the landing zone, the ball will be put at the 40. If the ball goes out of the end zone or flies into the end zone and is down, the ball's at the 35. I just think like I understand the 40. It's it's almost like kicking the ball out of bounds on a, on a kickoff now. Uh, you get the ball at the 35, but the 40 is too much. And I think if the ball is downed in the end zone, I understand again why they're doing it at the 35. Just I think you're giving the offense a little too much field position there. But other than that, like the what if concept, the ball hits think, the 10 though and bounces in the end zone? Uh, I think that would be the so is if the ball hits in the landing zone and rolls into the end and rolls into the end zone and is down, the ball's at the 20. Okay. So like they're basically trying to they want you to kick it in this the the landing zone, right? And then from there, um, the ball is either returned or, or whatnot. And if the ball does land and is caught in the landing zone, they can't fair catch it. They have to return it. So I just, you know, the the whole, you know, well, if it does this, you're at the 40. If it does this, it's at the 35. If it does this, it's at the 20. Like, let's just, let's just make something uniform and go from there. But they'll tweak it. I, I like the idea because it's going to reintroduce the, the the kickoff as a, a potentially meaningful play again in, in the game. Yeah. Hey, let's real quick talk about the Bengals and T. Higgins because there was a report by ESPN that the Bengals are shopping T. Higgins. So shoot, shot a couple texts, Sam, to people who cover the league. And I, I stood like, what does T. Higgins get by himself? Like, can the Bengals get a first round pick for himself? Just texted a couple of guys and they weren't really confident. Bengals fans are going to like hate this, but there wasn't a clear cut. Yeah, I think we can get a number one for him. Like maybe a second, third, a couple of things to point out here with T Higgins. T Higgins is in the final year of his contract because of the tag. He wants to be paid. 20 plus million a year. And that's kind of the going rate for two receivers. Look what uh, Jerry Judy's getting paid in Cleveland. The problem with T Higgins is not that he's not a good player, but that teams feel that if they draft a receiver in the first round, because it's so deep, they get him, they get those receivers at the minimum and they could get similar impact from those players as T Higgins. If you look at Sam, an example I used, uh, Jordan Allison was the 23rd pick last year in the, in the draft, right? 70 receptions, 911 yards, 10 touchdowns. 
Now, outside of the receptions, T. Higgins has not beat that touchdown mark in a season and hasn't beat those receiving yards in a season, right? And T. Higgins plays with Joe Burrow. Jordan Alice Addison is the two. I get it. Uh, Justin Jefferson was number the number one, but Jordan Je- uh, uh, Justin Jefferson was the number one. Jordan Addison wasn't getting the eye-popping numbers right away. It was kind of a consistent, and then he started picking up ske- steam. But remember this with Minnesota. They used five quarterbacks last year, and he got those numbers. So I think to be a fan and say, oh, T. Higgins, we can get a number one. I don't know, Sam, because you're going to have to pay who T. Higgins $20 million plus a year if you acquire him. I'm thinking more and more that T. Higgins worth the second round pick if they move him. Now, one of the things that was texting me, if they take T. Higgins and package it with 18, they could probably move up in the top 10, 9, 10, maybe 8 if they if something moves around. So I think automatically go, oh, T. Higgins, they can get a first round pick. I don't know, maybe, but I just don't think so, Sam, because of, and maybe at the end of the draft, end of the first round, Sam, all those six rece- uh, receivers go. And teams look at it and go, oh, man, we really need a receiver. T. Higgins is available. All right, we'll pay him the $20 million a year, and we'll give him the contract. All right, we'll give the Bengals a late first-round pick. But I think from a fan's point of view, you really thought T. Higgins, oh, man, T. Higgins is a really good number two. They're cashing in. It's a primary, you know, people are overpaying just from a contract term for these guys. I just, today, just kind of texting with people, I just don't get the the same feeling that I did earlier earlier this off season, Sam, that T Higgins would get you a one where I just think the cost and who's available in the draft might hurt him a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I see that side of it too. And, and so correct me if I'm wrong right now, he's tagged and it's like 21 million for one year. Oh, like got 20, Roughly. not quite 21, but 20. And so, some so yeah. So he's right around that. So basically what he's probably looking for is just multi-years. It's not necessarily about making 25. It's about give me yeah. a three-year deal or a four-year deal, right? He wants the guarantee. So I get it. Um, you know, th- there's so many variables that that can change, right, between now and the, the the draft or the end of the draft, and even before the season starts. Like, you know, if, if if a team has their number one go down at training camp, guess what? Guess whose value just just skyrocketed. So yeah, but if they don't trade him at the draft, you're keeping him. If they don't move him for picks at the draft, lo- then you, well, but my, my you point lose, is this. you lost your three. Right, but my point is this: is is if you the, the variables, there's so many things that can change between yeah. now and the draft and then between the draft and the season starting, like something drastic could happen or the draft could not go away that we think it's going to go. So his value could go down, like you said, but also his value could go up too. Like there's weirder things that have happened. I, I just don't kinda, think if, on draft if you have expectations, if you have the, as the Bengals have expectations of what you want from, for this guy. So if you've labeled this guy, a uh, a mid to late first round pick, you hold out. If somebody offers you that or something close, you, you, you pull the trigger. But if, if if this is what you think he is valued at and what the going rate is for this type of wide receiver, yeah, hold out for it and see what happens. Um, you know, and then if you get down the if you get down the road and realize that hey, we're not going to be able to get this, your expectations are going to change and you're going to have to make the best of it. I just hate the going all in for one season with a guy. And they haven't even contacted T. Higgins for the extension. So they, in their mind, they're going to keep T. Higgins for one year and then let him leave at the end of the season. I just don't know what you get out of that, Sam. It's kind of like all or nothing where you could get something for him now, right? Where where the Bengals have to do two things when they leave the draft in the first three rounds. You have to get your right tackle for the future, whether that's the first round, because Trent Brown doesn't stay healthy for complete 17. It just doesn't happen. You need a right tackle for the future that can step in next year. And you need a two- that's going to step in next year. And you need a three that can step in this year. So those are three immediate areas of need that you have to figure out in this draft picking 18. Now, I don't, if you want to move up and get a Duze, if you think T Higgins in that 18 and you want to make a splash and have two guys roll for the next five years, I'm down with that. I think that is a great move. And this kind of risk like, hey, second round pick, let's take a right tackle. And then we got Mm -hmm. depth. But Sam, if they don't, uh, I just don't like the sit on Higgins, let's go all in for one year and not be aggressive and do something. I would really love to see the Bengals be aggressive for once and just go for it because I think that the window is now open with Joe Burrow. The defense improved. You got your safety. I think Stone is going to do magnificent things for that defense. Everybody's going to come back healthy. I just seize the carpe diem, Sam. 
And I don't know if the Bengals are seizing the day. But they're the Bengals. So I just wish they operated differently. Do you remember the movie, the, the movie that Dane Cook was in waiting with Ryan Reynolds? Yes. So when you just said Carpe Diem, and he goes, he's a cook in the in the, the back of this restaurant. He goes, Carpe Diem, seize these nuts. <laughs> so I just I was thinking about Dane Cook, and you said Carpe Diem. Nice dynamite drop in there, Sam. Uh, um, no, you're right. I, it, you know, if you're a fan of the Bengals, you want to see them being aggressive. Your window is open. You've got a quarterback. You've got a a, a franchise quarterback. But you know, it's one of those things where I don't know what they've been offered. But maybe it's just one of those things where it's kind of fizzled out. The the market is fizzled out, and you're trying to make the best of what you got. I don't know. I, I I struggle. I struggle enough just following the Browns and everything going on with them. It's tough for me to follow what think, the what the Bengals are doing. I just think the Bengals just overrate their players at time. Where we're not moving him, and they get you know get off my lawn with the 89 year old or whatever he is, Mike Brown, that just feels the need. Like listen, the the I think it's legit to say when you look at the production of receivers in the past. And what they've done and what T. Higgins has done, and I get it, he was hurt last year, but it's not eye-popping number one receiver money from T. Higgins. So I think it's realistic to say, listen, T. Higgins could make $20 million a year, and you're right, Sam, he does want the multiple years, and Cincinnati just won't even talk to him about it. T. Higgins is going to hit the open market and get paid like $22 million or something like that by a team, and mm-hmm. that's what they're going to pay him. The problem is the 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 Bengals just have been so reluctant to give him that money. Is okay. So what's your plan? So if you're going yeah, to let a guy walk after he's a, what's your plan? Yeah, if you if you're the Bengals and you evaluate this guy or put a value of uh, again that first round pick, but the whole market is telling you that's not what we're valuing him at, then you got to make the best of it and, and figure out what you can get. So I'm not um, a, I'm not a GM, but wouldn't you think if you were a GM on a team and you would have your whole board with your depth chart? And when you have like a secret notebook, you would lock in your desk drawer of if this player got hurt, what's our plan? Like if this player got hurt for like, and, and you weren't prepared, like let's say Joe Burrow had a blew out his knee and wouldn't play again as an organization, as a GM, wouldn't you say, what's your plan? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like, if, yeah, if we lose our running back, if we lose Jamar chase, if whatever happens, we lose a player. What's our plan? And I just don't think I don't think holding on to T. Higgins to hold on to him one year is a good plan, especially no, when I you think have that's, money. That's, that's the worst case scenario, I would imagine. I mean, I it, it seems like the franchise tag almost never works out. Like I can't think of the scenario where it's worked out, especially recently. Um, and I think they're going to hold on to him. And I think at the end of the season, he's going to walk, and then you're going to need a two and a three wide receiver. So then you're going to be like, well, you could have done something. Unless you win a Super Bowl, then if you win a Super Bowl, who gives a crap? Because you won a Super Bowl. I just don't see this team in a position to win the Super Bowl. The I was going to say they're, not winning. they're not winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> I think they'll be damn competitive, though. That's just a damn tough division, right? Because we, we got baseball uh, Thursday, and I'm going to do a baseball segment, so bear with me. But, Sam, I look at, even though the Guardians and Reds didn't do much in the offseason, look at where they play. You got Don't you, when you judge a team, is like, look where they play? And then where you look, I think the Browns realized, okay, look where we play. And Browns I knew did. we got to do some things. The the NFL and Major League Baseball are two completely different animals as far as money and market size and all that stuff. So it's, it's a hard comparison for me, but I think what the point you're making is right, where the Browns know that the window is open and they're, they're, they're far more aggressive about it right now than the Bengals are seemingly, uh, at least based upon what – based upon the moves that they've made and what we've been able to see or read about. Did you see Kevin Stefanski? Um, and we'll do this tomorrow. They're close to a contract extension for Barry and Stefanski. But Stefanski was asked why they didn't bring Joe Flacco back. And did you see Stefanski's answer was, but yeah, I'm going to paraphrase here, but he says basically every team's different and we build our team for that season. And we really liked what Jameis can bring to the table. And that was his answer. Said every team's constructed different. This team the is first different. Half of that, like I would go James with until he table. brought in the whole. I like what Jameis brings to the table. Like the the whole first coach speak would have been just fine, but then I really want to jump off a cliff with that whole Jameis part of it. Don't you think they're very similar from the standpoint they both, when it comes to stats, throw a lot of picks, throw touchdowns and picks. Yeah. It's just I would rather have a veteran who has been there before and won in Joe Flacco than a guy who hasn't won. Well, he he did. He threw a lot of picks. He threw a lot of touchdowns. Who? Flacco. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. I mean, but oh, Joe's I thought you were talking about Jameis. No, they both did. The I'm just thing. saying, 
I would rather have the guy who has won. Oh yeah, yeah. Than the guy oh, who absolutely. hasn't won. Absolutely. Do that. Don't that team, whether you like the Browns or not, they rallied around Joe Flacco last year, mm-hmm. and that tells me something. I don't know if Jameis Winston has that same type of leadership quality, Sam, that makes people follow him like the Browns players did with Joe Flacco last year. If that makes sense. I just hope the I just hope the Browns make sure they have microphones in there for when uh, in the locker room when Jameis has to give a speech. The dumbest might be one of the dumbest individuals on the planet. I don't know. Did you hear his interview where he made fun of Cleveland about the weather? Like what they asked him why he wanted to come to Cleveland. He said, cause I wanted to find the coldest place in the world for my kids. I thought it was funny. I mean, he even screwed That's that the guy up. now, dude. Minnesota, Buffalo. Like, don't get me wrong. It's cold up there in the winter, but he can't get anything right. Ah. Uh, I think it could be worse. You could have Sam Darnold as your quarterback. So maybe maybe he found out Lake Erie has crabs and get some crab, crab legs from Lake Erie. Yes. By the way, Brown starting the season against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles on a Wednesday in Brazil. Players are going to I wonder what kind of security and lockdown measures they're going to have for, uh, for the, uh, the, the teams down there. Do you remember the old head coach who – Took the Vikings of the playoffs eight of 10 years. People don't give him credit. Denny Green. Oh, yeah. Denny Green was coach of the Cardinals. And I knew Denny pretty well from Minnesota. And he was, when I was working for CBS Sports, he did a weekly show with us. And when he was in Arizona, he did a show on uh, my morning show. And I got to know Denny a little bit. And we were talking about how he's, they played in Mexico. Like, I think his first year. And he said, dude, it is just a nightmare. Denny hated these games. He says, when you go overseas... You go to Mexico. It's the biggest bleep show. You got to ship in your food. You ship in your water because we're in Mexico. He says it's just a cluster bleep of organizing stuff behind the scenes for one game. Now, maybe it's better that this is week one, Sam, so you don't have like your routine thrown right. out of whack to go to and a get foreign it, get country another way and play. Early in the year. Yeah. yeah, so you could actually show up a little bit earlier and then get your routine going in Brazil. It's a Wednesday, which is weird. But I think maybe it'll be better for the Browns since it's week one and not like week eight. I would still think it'd be the longer you're in Brazil, the more security you have to worry about. I would agree. I would like, agree with that. Aren't you a target? Brazil's, oh, absolutely. Brazil's third world country. Like, let's not kid ourselves. And, you know, I understand the the Shield's trying to grow the game and stuff, but like Brazil? Yeah. Let's go to a dangerous place and play an NFL game where we're a target. Let's go to South America. Makes all kinds of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, the NFL will do anything for money. They will do anything. That that'd be that's a that's a tough one, man. Like I that's a tough one. It is. Uh quick break and then we come back for what's on X. Let's do it. OVE podcast. The OVE podcast has been on almost three months and our numbers are growing huge. If you have a business and want to reach tens of thousands of people, now's the time to advertise with the OVE podcast. Not only do you get a commercial in the podcast, but you get a commercial on my social media pages, the OVE social media pages, and other bonus programs that we do on the OVE podcast channel. So give us a call now at 614 414- 434 6330 or an email at the OVE podcast at gmail.com. We have a package that will work with your business no matter how big or small it is. We hope to be hearing from you soon. All right, I taped that today. Obviously, I'm wearing the same stuff hair part of the same, clean, wearing the Torgan Elliott hoodie. We need some hoodies. The OVE podcast, Sam, can you get a design? So yeah, I can do that. And then one of my clients is a um, uh, promotional products. You know, that's what they do. So I can reach out to them as well. The menace stuff looks cool. Oh yeah, it looks real cool. Um, simple. I don't like the black and yellow, but you know, we can figure that out. Um, well, we're not gonna go black and yellow. No, but I, and I understand they're doing color rush stuff too. But no, real cool. Uh, I'm sure we can work that out. What I was gonna tell you is the saw a question in the chat. Um, the game is going to be in Sao Paulo. Not a uh, Rio. Oh, okay. Uh, it looks like still a, in Brazil. Still in Brazil. <laughs> still it in looks Brazil. like one of those, uh, like it kind of like uh, uh, LDC, where it's it's you know got the the roof cut out, but oh, open like air and um, the, the stands are covered. So 
it's hey, gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot as balls down there. And and what? So that'll be what August September. Uh yeah. They just did not. Well, we got what's on X. So they announced something with uh, the NFL schedule today, and we'll get to that real real quick before we do what's on X. Uh, shout out to one of the best guys in Columbus media who is getting a kidney transplant t- soon. Aaron Portsline. He announced it on social media. Uh, Aaron's been sick for a little bit, and Aaron's going to OSU and getting to get that kidney transplant. So. Uh, text Porty today. He's a great guy. He's covered the team since day one, so we wish him well. And thoughts with Aaron Portsline as he gets a major surgery, and let's uh, pray for him. He's a really good dude. I mean, really good dude. I like his writing. You might not, but he's a good dude. He's got a great family, so we wish him well. So even you haters out there, wish him well too. Don't be a hater. Be a hater, but be a hater in a different way. Yeah, be a human too. Absolutely. All right, you ready for what's on X, Sam? Let's do it. I love this tweet by comedian Jeff Dye. Jeff Dye tweets out, stop remaking movies and start remaking video games. That is a great idea for Jeff Dye. Can you imagine the video games, the cool concepts they have for video games that they could remake and make better? what What was your favorite game, like old school game that you would want remade? Oh, old school game. I think they could like none that remake old school. My favorite is Galaga, but I don't think you can remake that, but I could handle like a Mike Tyson punch out remake. So they did that for super Nintendo. They made one. I was going to mine. My favorite Nintendo game. NES was blaster master. I want that game. Okay. Yes. You know, I got one of those. My wife gave it to me for my birthday. One of those 4,000 video game machines in one. Yeah. The uh, emulators. Yeah, the problem is it said it had punch out and it has super punch out. Mm. Well, I could I could probably show you off the record how to download an emulator and get the games and play on your computer and stuff. Really? Oh yeah. Like on the my video arcade machine? Uh you could probably figure it out how to do it that way, yes, but I could show you how to do it on a computer, no doubt. Yeah, I don't I never played a video game on a computer. Huh. My kids do. I don't know how to do that. Show but you how I, to hook a- you can hook a controller up to it and play it that way. Okay, I have a supercomputer too for the Udnus podcast. So yeah, I, I you, can do it. You're playing 8-bit. You won't need anything crazy. Beautiful. Okay, let's do NFL stuff. You mentioned the Browns. Here's Nolan Weisskopf, uh, Browns with Noah on Twitter, or on X, excuse me. Brown Stadium update. The two options are either to renovate the Lakefront Stadium or build a new dome stadium outside of downtown one option would be build the dome on the Brook Park area that the Browns have a opportunity to purchase. Sam, what would you rather see? A renovation to the kind of crappy but has character. Given, given those two options, uh, I say renovate the downtown stadium. I don't Do you really. I don't like the idea of a dome, and I don't like the stadium being that literally within a, a hundreds of feet of the airport. I do not like the current stadium, but just you know, it 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 is what it is. It got the team back, right? Mm-hmm. Just like more of a party atmosphere. And I know I'm afraid to go in the Muni lot on as a visiting fan. Hmm. I don't think come over, come on over to the Brown side. I don't cheer for him to lose. I'm just not a Brown, and that's fine. Fan. You go down there, just and my you know, wife is wear, from Cincinnati. Don't wear black, yellow, or purple, or you know, bangle bangle stripes, and you should be fine. No, I wore a Vikings jersey in there, and it wasn't good. I had to turn around. That's I was your own with, damn fault. I was with like ten Bengals fans. We thought it was going to be safe, or not Bengals, Browns fans. We thought it was going to be safe for me. They go, "Oh, don't worry. There's ten of us, dudes." Yeah, we turned around. My buddy goes, "Let's get the bleep out of here." A uh, Hall of Fame game announcement from Adam Schefter. Hall of Fame game is going to be August first, eight o'clock. Texans and the Bears. I wonder why the Bears and the Texans would be in that game. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's yes. almost like they have players that they're trying to highlight. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the NFL and moves today, the owners' meetings, NFL owners voted today to approve the trade deadline that will now be pushed back one week, the Tuesday after week nine. I think that's I, better I, for injuries. Yeah, yeah. Oh, injured. I, I, I mean, grand scheme, I don't think it's that big a deal, but I also think the farther you can move it back, I guess, kind of injuries. And it always seemed to me like way too early in the season to have the trade deadline where where it was. 
Yep. Uh, speaking of games in the NFL, more Adam Schefter. NFL is planning to play another game this year on Christmas Day, which is a Wednesday. So a Wednesday day, Christmas Day is coming. NFL is king, and Santa brings you another NFL game. Thank you, Santa. All you all you have to do is compete with the NBA, and that's not that hard to do. No, it's really not. It is really not. When you're the NFL, you can compete with anyone. Listen, Absolutely. Jesus could come back and do a primetime special and say, I'm taking my talents to heaven. And guess what? You're watching football. You know what I always say about church, Sam? I don't go to church during the NFL season because if they had football on Sundays when Jesus was alive, he would understand. In fact, he'd be watching the game with you. Just, just saying. Ah, uh, here's Brooke Pryor on X. Mike Tomlin on the decision to deal Kenny Pickett from his perspective. He felt like a change of scenery would be a good thing, obviously, when we felt the trajectory of the business with Chicago moving in the right direction with those dominoes started to fall. I won't get into specifics about our conversations like Kenny did, but I and I added the Kenny part. Uh, <laughs> I am appreciative of his efforts during his time in Pittsburgh and wish him nothing but the absolute best in Philadelphia. And unlike Mike Tomlin, Kenny did not feel the same about the Steelers franchise. Taking taking the high road, pretty classy move by Tomlin. Yep, absolutely. My my uh, opinion on Tomlin's changing a little bit. Maybe it's your grumpiness. Sam is wearing on me, I'm but I'm starting off, to brother. think. Yes, but I I still think Tomlin, good coach. I think just that sometimes it's a good situation for both parties to break away so you can appreciate each other. And I think when Tomlin leaves and Pittsburgh doesn't have winning seasons and you start to lose, you're going to like, oh, we miss Mike Tomlin. And then when Tomlin is coaching a bad team, he's going to say, oh, I miss the Steelers. I think you're right. Yep. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, but another shout out to our friends at 11 Warriors posted Caleb Downs, officially a Buckeye with the black stripe. What took him so long? Judkins got his today as well. We just don't have a picture of him. Uh, quick college football note here, Sam. Michigan safety from pro uh, PFF college, pro football focus, I think. Uh, Michigan safety Rod Moore suffered a torn ACL in practice yesterday. Listen, I don't want anyone to ever get hurt and be out of season, but more bad news from Michigan is not always bad news for Buckeyes. Didn't they also lose uh, – uh, they're losing a wide receiver to the transfer portal? Did I see that too, or was that clickbait? Yeah. No, I think you're correct. Let's go. This, this spring, this spring transfer portal is going to be wild. I think. Yeah, I don't like it. Well, it's already, it's almost over. What do you got? Another week or something like that in it? I didn't. I don't think it opens up until like mid-April. No, I thought the basketball players started already. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm talking oh, about yeah, football. football. Oh, got you. Got about football. You. I'm thinking of basketball right now. I'm on a basketball yeah. mindset with the Buckeyes playing tonight. Well, I think uh, it's going to be wild. And if I remember, too, like the transfer portal in the spring in the SEC, you cannot transfer to another SEC team. That's what the Big Ten did forever. Yeah. Right? If you transferred. Without having the waiver signed by the coach. Yeah. Which, but, you know, that's out the door. A couple Blue Jacket rumors as we end. What's on X? Here's Jason Newland, Fire the Cannon podcast. Former Blue Jacket GM Doug McClain told the real Kipper and Bourne podcast. Hey, Kipper and Bourne. That former head coach, John Tortorella, wanted to move into management in his final year with the Blue Jackets, but now former GM, Yarmo Kekalainen, wouldn't allow it. McLean said Kekalainen just wanted to move on from Torts and wanted him gone from last season. Hey, hey, Sam, which team that Tortorella coaches now is in the playoffs? I believe that would be the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, and he did it in two years, correct? Yep. And we've had Brad Larson for two years and crappy Pascal. So what I will say is you're right in that regard, but do I think Tortorella is going to lead Philly to the promised land and win a cup? No, no. All right. But Who I'm curious. I'm curious as to what position uh, in the front office Tortorella was going to go into. Cause he wasn't going to, I mean, was it going to be GM? Wasn't going to be GM. Otherwise Yarmo, you know, next to that um you know or maybe he wanted he to be have GM, the power to, he didn't have the Yarmo. power to name to, to, to name uh jd's position because that's yarma's boss so yeah they, they really need that. a new president i mean they really do mike priest needs to ding dude, they need a lot dude no but mike priest needs to go and like, the only other thing too do am i am i wrong for being skeptical that that came from doug mcclain oh of course 
I mean, that guy's a boob too. Oh, <laughs> he was here for the first ten years. Part of the reason the Blue Jackets suck as bad as they, as they do is because that asshole was allowed to be uh, kept around the nationwide in the uh, in the front office for too long. Dude, I'm telling you, you need to get the Athletic. It's a dollar a month. Porty did. I've got it. I just. I, I don't did you read it. Porty's article? No, I need oh, to. Porty just did an article, the history of the team, and the thing is, Porty left out like the Adam Foot stuff. The Todd Richards doesn't want the job stuff. It turned down the job. There's so much stuff. P- Porty like summed it up. This franchise and the misery. They are the worst franchise since they started in sports. When did he write it? Uh, two days ago. Okay, it'll be easy to find. I'm gonna look oh, it up right now. The Columbus Blue Jackets since they started, worst franchise in sports. That's not to be not surprising. Important. It's oh, record. there it is, front page. I'm gonna have to read this one. Awful, and yeah. All right, one more Blue Jacket note here. Porty with the Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets eliminated from the playoffs 17th time in 23 seasons. The best the Blue Jackets can do in 11 games is 80 points. They are bad. 17 nice. out of 23 seasons. Holy well, then half the points. half the starters are dead right now. Holy! I mean, well, honestly, I don't blame but them. But the season was over even before that, though. Oh, it's absolutely. Like last season where they were dropping like flies. And on the Tortorella conversation, Sam, if hypothetically Tortorella was here for the last three seasons and the nincompoops, Larson and Vincent, who is making the younger players better? Because the knock on torts is he doesn't make the younger players better. Okay. But are the younger players better under John Tortorella or the two nincompoops who have been here the last three years? I would say Tortorella because they would learn something. I don't even think yeah, it's yeah, I saw Tortorella just for, for some reason un unbeknownst to anybody, pinch the captain the other day. Yes, he did. Philly, not, no one's really happened. And he won't I've allow heard. anyone to ask a question on it either. Have you seen his press conferences? Yeah, he, he gets a little red ass sometimes. Uh, Gorgie, appreciate the two, man. Vincent is only here because Babcock was a tool. And Gorgie, as much as I would say I like to agree with you, Babcock should have never been an option. That's completely and entirely on Yarmo and management. And Mike ownership. Babcock. Or and I mean, even, Mike and even Mike allowing Reist. And even allowing Babcock to be an option. Yep. So should have never happened. Yes. And, Pas- and and they still had time to do a quick coaching search. And Pascal Vincent was turned out, got nixed from the job two times. And you went to him knowing he wasn't your guy twice. What tells you he was your guy the third time? Yeah. Between that and the fact that he hadn't had a head coaching job in the three, in three years, everybody else in the NHL said, no, should have told you all you needed to know. Oh, incompetence. All right. We are back. Tomorrow, NIT news, more NFL news, more Buckeye football talk, OVE podcast. Remember, subscribe to the new channel. We'll see you tomorrow. See you guys.